In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with another example of how to build a house. I made an example a while ago for a single story home and it was rectangular shaped. I wanted to make an L shaped home and I'm probably going to make a variety of different homes to give you an idea of how you can assemble some of these things or actually how they are assembled and then you can use them, uh, try and figure out how your home might be assembled if you're going to be doing some remodeling. So first thing we are going to have here is a monolithic or a single poured slab. This would be something that should be poured all at once with a separate garage slab. This is usually at an angle sloping towards the opening. And uh, you can have a slab where all of this is poured at once, but most of the time it's uh, going to be like this. You're going to have a stronger slab if you could pour the whole thing at once, by the way. And then we have the exterior walls with a couple of windows. And I'm going to have a, I'm going to put together a playlist of videos for this entire project with the floor plans and some more details of the roof framing and stuff like that. So. This is just the first video here, in case uh, you're thinking about uh, maybe I missed something. And again, if you feel like I did miss something after you watched all the videos when they are done, feel free to leave a question in the comment area. A sliding glass door opening. Couple of windows. Front door and part of the garage door. And you can see where the uh, channels are cut for the walls to have the top plates join into also. Garage door header and then a door from the garage into the house. And then the interior walls. Let's go ahead and zoom in to the corner here, entryway, garage door, give you an idea how this is assembled. The garage, and then you have a door going into a laundry, you can have a washer and dryer over here. And this would be the master bedroom, bath, and closet. See the master bedroom here. And then bedroom one, bedroom two. A living room and a dining room. Kitchen. Two entrances going into the kitchen. And of course the window for the sink. Usually a window in a kitchen, like they like to center them over the sink. And that's what I did with this drawing here. Or you'll see on the floor plans later, of course. And the bathroom. And of course the washer and dryer would go over here in this room here. Another view of the bathroom, master bathroom and the master bath or the master closet. Hallway coming into the master bedroom, entrance going into the bathroom and the closet area. The closet for one of the bedrooms and this of course would be a linen closet or linen cabinet that would be accessed from the hallway. And then the other closet for the other bedroom. Give you a view from the top. Garage, master closet, bedroom, master bedroom, bedroom one, closet, bedroom two, closet, living room, dining room, kitchen, entrance, bathroom, and laundry room. Let's go ahead and put the roof on. This is a truss roof. Outlookers notched into the gable truss. Remember the gable truss is going to be different than the regular trusses that go throughout the house. It needs a wall on the end of it. Let's put the fascia board on, mitered corner. Shoot over here, take a look at this. This of course will be the fascia board mitered for the fascia board from the garage. It's going to butt into it and we can see here where we're using a two by four and hanging the backing the backing for roof trusses needs to hang so that it can move as the roof trusses move um, as more weight is applied to it from the roofing and stuff like that 
Now you're not going to have any tails, roof rafter tails in the garage because we're going to have another roof truss that uh, attaches to it. This is common and you might not you know sometimes they just nail a two by four cross or depending upon the spacing of the trusses. Another view at the other end, same kind of setup. And here we have some more hanging backing for the ceiling. It's for the drywall ceiling. Depending upon where the trusses land, you need to add more backing in. And uh, backing, of course, needs to hang from the trusses. And it is for the drywall to attach at the corners. So the garage will frame in the same way with the trusses as the main building. Kind of just going to be using gable trusses here. Um, and then take a look at the front of the garage. Same kind of thing, gable end. Let's go ahead and put some plywood down or OSB. You're going to need to have the OSB or your plywood down, your roof sheeting so that we can install our roof rafter fill to make this thing look like it was all part of the um, building. So I know a lot of people a long time ago, they used to put valleys in here to do this, but this right here is probably the most common way to have this done now. And I'd imagine I had a lot of problems with the valleys, the way that they were built in the past. Let's go ahead and put some sheeting on there. And that is it for this video. If you like it, hit the old thumbs up button and uh, let me know by leaving some comments in the comment area if these are videos, more videos you want to see. And again, I'm going to put together a playlist. Um, it's going to have the floor plan and more information about this house. And I'm thinking about doing a series on, I mean, a variety of different series about different homes that are built um, and how the footings and stuff attach. And of course, this one didn't have any anchor bolts in it or, or pins to fasten the plates down. I'm going to put a little more information in there about that also. So again, the button, hit the old thumbs up button if you like it. And uh, let me know you like the videos.